Well, today was a special day. We, we brought a bunch of hockey alums back to honor uh, Tom and Sally Savage and their matching gift uh, to create the challenge for gifts to the Grant Stanbrook Fund from our hockey alumni. Now, building endowment is critical for all of our programs, and we now have a $2 million hockey endowment uh, to directly support our hockey program uh, that we're going to build on going forward. So it's a really exciting day for all of us here at Maine Athletics. Well, I think it's more than what it means to me, I see it as what it means to a community. Uh, obviously it meant a lot to me. It uh, was a, uh, wonderful to see really highly skilled athletes in a sport I enjoy, but also to see that uh, arena full, see the students, see people locally, and of course to see the state of Maine support it was something that is very meaningful to the whole state, and it's a state I love, so it, it means a great deal to me and to my wife. When I talked to Tom about this six or seven years ago, we realized that due to the fault of no one, we had a twenty-five dollars to $50,000 hockey endowment, and we knew we had, to, we had to build that. And now, four or five years later, we have $2 million in hand, uh, and we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep growing this, and the great thing about endowments is they last in perpetuity. And as we continue to build this and our fans continue to support it and our alums, it's only going to get bigger and bigger and do more and more great things for our hockey program. The time when we talked about this, that was part of what we were thinking about too, because it is such a, uh, a special thing and to, and to see these athletes get together 20 years after and, the, and see what it, it meant to them. And I think it brings back, and I think younger people will see that. And, and it's, it's very successful and uh, we've enjoyed being part of it. But. Hi everyone, it's Jimmy Howard here. I just want to reach out and say thank you to Tom and Sally Savage for their generous, generous contribution, as well as to all the alums and the great, great fans of Maine hockey. Uh, without uh, everyone uh, coming together, the uh, Grant Stanbrook uh, Fund would not have been possible. So thank you very much and go Black Bears. It was pretty emotional, to tell you the truth. It brought back a lot of memories, and it was just very seemed very heartfelt from the players, and it really meant a lot to both of us. The importance of building endowment for our programs uh, can't be overstated. Uh, it's critical that our, our teams have what they need to compete at the Division I level, and fundraising plays a huge role in that. And by building our endowments, we give our teams uh, additional funding to help them do things outside of their normal budgeted dollars. Uh, to ensure that we're giving our student athletes a Division I experience and building programs that our fans can all be proud of. So I uh, can't overstate the importance of our development efforts and in particular endowment building here in our athletic department. The endowment was created uh, so that we could grow our program and to provide our program with the additional resources we need to compete against the very best in Division I, as Ken, as Ken said. Uh, the fund already because this has been in the works, uh, Tom and Sally's gift, and a whole bunch of the gifts that our alums have given. Uh, we, we've already been able to use some of these funds to enhance the program. So a, a few years ago, we went to Ireland to play, and uh, we were able to spend an extra day in Ireland to create a better experience for our players. Uh, last year, we took an extra trip uh, to play the U.S. national team in Plymouth, Michigan. And again, that was through, through the funds that Tom and Sally so generously donated and, and what we've been able to raise through our alums and other friends of the program. Uh, this is Grant Stanbrook. Greetings, Maine hockey fans. Your support has always made our opponents feel they're playing the game one man short. Tom and Sally Savage, I wish circumstances would have allowed me to be there in person tonight to honor you. Your magnanimous contribution, which matches the contributions of our former players and many friends of Maine hockey, is so very appreciated. I'm certain if Sean Walsh is watching the Go Black Bear hockey broadcast from the TV set on his golf cart, he's jumping up in the air, clicking his heels together, fist pumping, and shouting along with the rest of the Maine hockey family, Thank you, Tom and Sally, and go Black Bears. And other existing and new hockey endowments held at the University of Maine Foundation. The overall result is over $2 million in new endowed funds to support new Maine hockey. The entire $200 million vision for tomorrow campaign is expected to be completed in 2020.
2020. You main athletics would like to thank Tom and Sally Savage for their significant contributions to Humane Hockey. Black Bear Nation, please join us in a round of applause. I truly believe that if you're gonna do something better, you gotta start by innovating. Think about how to solve for a customer problem in a way that's quicker, different, and more customer-centric. The bank's promise has been fundamentally the same from the beginning till now, and that's ensuring that all that we do is making the lives of our employees, our customers, and the communities better. And it's their better, not what's defined as our better. Girl Scout Ingenuity meets Dunkin' Coffee, you get a cup of can-do. Girl Scout cookie-inspired flavors are at Dunkin'. Try Thin Mints and Coconut Caramel today. And get a medium latte or cappuccino for $2 from 2 to 6 p.m. America runs on Dunkin'. What makes a legacy? It takes more than bravado, more than your attitude, or the face you show to the world. Your legacy is your story. The place you carved for yourself in history, and who you helped along the way. The actions you take to earn it. The things you do even when the sun isn't around to see them. Our legacy, helping you build yours. Visit fisherplows.com or your local dealer for more information. Take the guesswork out of creating your new kitchen or bath with help from the design professionals at Hammond Lumber Company's Kitchen Bath and Flooring Center. Bring in your own ideas or get inspired by Hammond's complete in-store showroom displays. Hammond's designers can show you several variations on your project with accurate 3D renderings. Hammond's design services are included when you purchase your materials from them, and of course, delivery is free within striking distance of any Hammond location statewide. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. This Dunkin' Latte is crazy delicious. Mm. I want to remember everything about this moment. The rich espresso, the pillowy foam. What about me? It's just weird that I'm not in there. Try our medium lattes and cappuccinos for $2 from 2 to 6 p.m. at Dunkin'. Uh, I think expectations are high, at least from my standpoint. I mean, obviously, um, we didn't have a very good year last year. Um, we've had a great fall. Uh, we worked on a lot of things, um, playing-wise, team-wise, culture-wise. Uh, we hired an outside source to help us with our strength and conditioning, speed and agility. Um, the progress that we've made this fall, I would say, probably equals any fall that we've had since I've been the head coach. So from my standpoint, our expectations are going to be very high. Well, I think they, like most, even the, the sophomores this year who were freshmen last year, a lot of them played a lot. I mean, they've just got to take their game to another level. I mean, it's, I think that's the way it is in college athletics. Every year that you go, you're expected to do a little bit more. So um, our juniors are going to be expected to, I don't want to say play like seniors, but they're going to be expected to be better than they were last year. Our sophomores are going to be better than they were as freshmen. And we've got some pretty good freshmen that, that have come in. So I think everybody's expectations of themselves uh, have to go to another level. Their own expectation needs to be high. They have to come into the year of expecting themselves to do great things. I think sometimes um, when kids get to college, they're not really quite sure how good they can really be. And I know one of the things we're going to challenge our players with this year is like, how good do you really want to be? You can be a lot better than probably you think you can be. And um, I think for our sophomores this year who played last year as freshmen, I mean, that experience is invaluable to them. I think more in terms, maybe not so much in playing on the field, but in terms of how to prepare for the springs that we have in terms of we got to go to the dome next week and then we've got to travel and you know what, you're gonna, you might have to stay overnight because the snowstorm hit and how am I going to get my school work done? So it's not so much playing, it's how do I handle all the other things that are thrown at me 
having to play softball at Maine, um, that's the biggest thing for them. And I think the one thing about playing here is it's the challenges that make the program great. The challenges that we have to overcome and they have to overcome and they see that they can do it is only going to help them as they become adults and they get out into the real world. It's like, holy smokes, I overcame that. I can do almost anything now. Well, I think, you know, I'd probably start out of those sophomores. I'd probably start with Kelby Drews, who played a lot of shortstop for us last year. Um, she's hard-nosed, she's tough, she's competitive, she expects a lot of herself. Um, she works really hard, um, and she's our shortstop. I mean, if you look at any team, any level, baseball, softball, they're good at catching, they're good at short, they're good at center field, and they're good pitching good up the middle. So you start with a good shortstop. So I think it probably starts with her. We got a couple of second basemen, Grace McGoldrick and um, Amanda McBurney, who will play second. Expect a lot out of them because they're in the middle of the field. Um, and then I think Emily Reed and Gabby Siciliano, a couple of pitchers who are sophomores, they're going to be looked upon to help Kylie and Lily pitch um, and contribute to what we're doing. So I think the sophomores, I don't think there's one class that's more important than the other. I think collectively they've all got things they've got to do for us to be successful. I think we, we go with the approach of not one person is going to carry us. Like we want to be able to use five. I mentioned those four and then we have uh, Caitlin Fallon from Rhode Island who's a freshman um, who I think has got tremendous upside. She could be really, really good. She's another one of those people that I don't think she knows how good she can really be. But those five, Caitlin, Kylie, Lily, Emily, and Gabby, we're gonna use them as a staff. There are some people that use their pitchers as one pitcher that throws 220 innings. We want our kids to be strong. They're all a little bit different in what they bring to the table. Um, so someone that can dominate kids that can hit rise balls, we wanna use them. If they can't hit the drop ball, we wanna use a pitcher that can come in and, and throw the drop ball and so forth. So I don't think there's one person um, although, like you had mentioned, Kylie and Lily have the most experience. Um, but I think as the year goes on, they'll all get their chance. And as the year goes on, and you get to the tournament, you got to play your best people. You know, I think it's still kind of the jury's still out on how it's going to play out. I think the one thing that we have this year that we haven't really had in the past is we're, we're too deep at every position. We've got two really good players, I think, at every position. Um, I'd go back and start it with Kelby again. I think Kelby's probably going to hit third for us. Um, but you've got other people like Bree Neely, who is as fast as anybody I've ever seen. She hits from the left side. I mean, to be able to get her on base and then follow her up with some other fast people, Kai Enos, who plays left and center, um, can be really, really good too. Uh, a couple of our freshmen, Izzy from California and Jazz from California, who play corners. Um, they're going to be looked upon to give us some offensive production. I think right now, if you said what's your lineup, I couldn't tell you. I can just tell you that Kelby's probably going to play short. Keeley Clock will probably catch um, to start with because Keeley did most of the catching last year. And then I think the rest of it is just kind of up in the air only in terms of because we're deep and they're all, they're all good. Well, I think uh, Mariah Pearson, who's from North Carolina, didn't really play in the fall, or she didn't play in the fall because she had an um, operation on her shoulder. So I don't really know where she's going to fit in. Left-handed hitter, can play the outfield, can play first. Really, really competitive. Um, like I mentioned, Izzy at first, probably will get a chance to play. Jazz will get a chance to play because like, we lost Alyssa Derrick at third. She played all the time for four years, so it'll be ja uh, Jazz and then Becca Finley are going to battle it out for third. Um, I can see all four of them playing, I can see two of them playing, I can see one of them playing. I think it, it's all going to depend upon what they bring to the table and how they're able to compete and transition into what we need to do in terms of our travel and everything that we have going on. No, I think, I think winning is important. I think for a while, um, some people had a mindset of, well, it doesn't really matter until you get back to the conference, which obviously if you win your conference, you're going to go to a tournament. But to me, it's you try to win all those games because you have to learn how to win. Um, it's not just all of a sudden you get to your conference games and it's like, oh, all right, I'm going to learn how to win now. You, you need to compete and learn how to win. And if you have the mentality of this doesn't really matter, you're going to have games in the spring where you think, oh, it doesn't really matter. 
So everything is important. Every game's important. We want to try to win every game. We have to be able, I think, our competitive level or the compete level that we have will be a good indication of what kind of year we're going to have. We have to be able to learn how to compete and we have to learn how to, when we get knocked on our butt and we've given up three runs, we've got to be tough enough to come back and say, I'm going to compete some more now. And I think the teams that are the toughest are the teams that win. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, I think the spring trip is, it gets you ready, but it's also because you go play games and then you have to go back inside to train. It's not like going to play and you're outside now for the rest of the year. You gotta go back inside and train. So the transition from doing those, for me, it's also about it breaks up the monotony of being in the dome. So the first two weekends you go play, you got five games on the weekend, let's go compete, let's see what we do well. And then when you get to the spring trip, and we're gonna try something different this year in the spring trip that we haven't done, we're actually going to play fewer games and practice more because it gives us an opportunity to practice outside as opposed to playing a bunch of games and then having to come back inside. It gives us a chance to really understand the game. So we're going to practice more during our spring trip. And if we haven't done that, um, I think it'll be beneficial for us because the other thing that happens in the spring trip with the travel, kids get tired. They get, you know, and some people think, how can you get tired? But traveling makes you tired. I think that, you know, probably you're going to pick UMBC again because they have Coppith Wade, the pitcher coming back, who's the lefty who just dominated everybody. Stony Brook has got Melissa Rodrich, who's been the player of the year the last two years. And um, so they'd be, UMass Lowell probably will be good again because they didn't lose a whole lot. But the one thing I know, and I think it's every, probably every coach looks at it the same way. The team that hosts the tournament, who generally is your first place team, hasn't won the tournament since 2010. It's been somebody else. And for us, like I want to get into the tournament as first or second so you get a bye the first day, you don't have to play. Like that bye is really important. But um, I think that's the great thing about our conference. There's not one team that really dominates it. Every time you go out and play, everybody's pretty competitive. Um, and you know going into the season, you've got a chance to win it. I. From our standpoint, like I fully expect that we're probably in the preseason poll going to be picked last because we were 12 and 29 last year. We lost four seniors, but you know what? That's a great thing for us because it's a little bit of motivation um, and so forth. So the conference is always up for grab, which is a great thing. This Dunkin' Latte is crazy delicious. Mm. I want to remember everything about this moment. The rich espresso, the pillowy foam. What about me? It's just weird that I'm not in there. Try our medium lattes and cappuccinos for $2 from 2 to 6 p.m. at Dunkin'. I truly believe that if you're gonna do something better, you gotta start by innovating. Think about how to solve for a customer problem in a way that's quicker, different, and more customer-centric. The bank's promise has been fundamentally the same from the beginning till now. And that's ensuring that all that we do is making the lives of our employees, our customers, and the communities better. And it's their better, not what's defined as our better. When Girl Scout Ingenuity meets Dunkin' Coffee, you get a cup of can-do. Girl Scout cookie-inspired flavors are at Dunkin'. Try Thin Mints and Coconut Caramel today. And get a medium latte or cappuccino for $2 from 2 to 6 p.m. America runs on Dunkin'. What makes a legacy? It takes more than bravado, more than your attitude, or the face you show to the world. Your legacy is your story. The place you carved for yourself in history. And who you helped along the way. The actions you take to earn it. The things you do even when the sun isn't around to see them. Our legacy, helping you build yours. Visit fisherplows.com or your local dealer for more information.
Just to give you a little bit of information on Coach Curry. Um, this, I think, is the most important key. She's got a lot of accolades, but she is the only female full-time Division I men's assistant basketball coach. Hi, this is Mike Toole at ClearPoint Capital, and welcome to the Black Bear Money Minute. Today's topic is risk tolerance and what that means to you as an investor. Risk tolerance is the degree of uncertainty you're willing to take on to achieve potentially greater rewards in your financial planning. The different types of investor profile are aggressive, moderate, and conservative. Your risk tolerance is determined by a few factors, your investment goals, how much time you have to invest, and your other financial resources. Do you know your risk tolerance? If not, give us a call. We'll help you figure it out. Call us today at 207-307-7718.
Clearpoint Capital and the Maine Black Bears, now that's a winning combination. All right, men, here we go. Hey, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy for you guys. Day, Valentine's Day, here we go. Black, five yards, dead. Here we go, pull! Come on, Kyrie, let's go, Kyrie! Reset the rope. Here we go, feet, pull! Feet, 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 feet! Get up there, there pull go. him out! There you go. Pull him out, pull. The years that we're at our best is when we have no issues at all because everybody is extremely focused on what we gotta do in here. We are here to win championships. Championship mentality. You control that every day. Everybody look at me right now. Every day. So today, happy Valentine's Day. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Have a championship mentality every single day. Good work today. I got you on a break. Here we go. Family on three, one, two, three. Yeah.